This topic is about total internal reflection. Okay, so what is total internal reflection? Firstly, we will see a comparison. Okay, so you can see in the table, it is the showing the light ray traveling from the optically less dense medium to an optically denser medium as shown. So you can see that when the light travel from the optically less dense medium to a denser medium, the light will bend towards the normal as shown. And when the light is changed this direction, the angle of incidence increase, so that the angle of refraction will also increase together. Okay, so you can see this is the situation we observe. And then we will compare to the other situation. This time, the light is traveled from the optically denser medium to an optically less dense medium as shown. So you can see that the light will expect to bend away from the normal. When the angle of incidence keep on increasing, the angle refraction will keep on increasing. But what makes it special is, at a particular moment, the light will bend and go along the boundary. Okay, so we say that at that moment, the angle refraction is R, okay, equals 90. And then afterwards, when we further increase the angle of incidence, the light will go back and bend towards light the refraction. So we call this as internal refraction. Actually, internal refraction is not something very special. It's keep on observe when we put the light from the optically denser medium direct to the optically less dense medium. So usually, before we talk about total internal refraction, we will just focus on the refracted ray. So we just simply ignore this internal refracted ray. However, this internal refracted ray is always appeared when the light travels from the optically denser medium to an optically less dense medium. And below, we will see the two graphs. For the two graphs, we are comparing the light of the internal refracted ray and the refracted ray. So the graph above is about the internal refracted ray, and the graph below is about the reflected ray. So we will focus on the change of the intensity to the theta. Intensity is reflected by its brightness. So you can observe in the graph, okay, when the light travel from the optically denser medium to the optically less dense medium for the internal refracted ray, when the theta keep on increasing, okay, the intensity is get gradually increased. That means the brightness is keep on increase. And it will reach the stable and reach the maximum at the particular point C. So when the theta larger than C, all the light will undergo internal refraction. So the brightness is keep maximum. And comparatively, the graph below is about the refracted ray. That means the ray that should able to go out to the less dense medium. So you can see that this time the intensity is keep on decreasing. That means it's become less bright. And after the particular point C, okay, when the theta is larger than C, there is no more refraction. So by comparing these two graphs, we will see that there is a very special point. We call it C here. It's the moment that we're just able to observe total internal refraction, and also the moment that the refraction is completely disappeared. So this important angle we call is the critical angle, the critical angle C. So by definition, what is the critical angle? Critical angle C of the medium is the angle of incidence of the light rate in the medium such that the angle of refraction is just equal to 90. So, okay, this is the definition of the critical angle. So by this definition, we can derive a formula. So here, we'll show how do we derive it. Suppose the light is traveled from the optically denser medium to the air, and the R here is 90. 
and we say that at this very moment the i is just equal to c. So by the n one sine theta one and n two sine theta two, okay, which we talk about it for many many times in chapter two point one. So we can substitute difference value. Okay, here we say that n m is the refractive index of the medium m. As you know, the sine ninety is actually one. So we can formulate the equation like this. Okay, so summarize. The sine c is equal to one over n, or n is equal to one over sine c. Once again, okay, what is c and n? C is the critical angle of the medium, and then the n is the reflective index of this medium. So actually, different media will have different. Reflective index, so it will also have different critical angle. So here, why we need this critical angle? Because we want to predict when will we have the total internal reflection. So if the angle of incidence in the medium is greater than the critical angle, then we will observe the total internal reflection. So here, I would like to emphasize one point: is this critical angle usually we will not able to find it in the diagram, even it's called an angle, but actually its nature is similar to the refractive index. This is a number for us to reference, and this is a number for us to do the comparison, and to predict when will we have total internal reflection. So this angle is just depends. On the refractive index of the media, so usually we will not able to find it in the diagram. It's a value for us to do comparison. So here we will continue to talk about the meaning of this critical angle and how do we use it. So the you can see in these three cases, okay. The first case, the angle of incidence is smaller than the critical angle, so you can see that there is no total internal reflection. So the light will just go out to the less dense medium, and which is bent away from normal. And in case two, you will see that the angle of incidence is just equal to the critical angle. So okay, it is the moments that the light will just go along the boundary as shown. And the last case, if the angle of incidence is larger than the critical angle, there is no reflection, and total internal reflection occur. So you can see that the light is get reflected, and go back into medium. So once again, okay, we want to predict when will we have total internal reflection. Here are the two criteria in order to have total internal reflection occurs. Criteria number one: the light must travel from an optically dense medium to an optically less dense medium, for example, from glass to air. Secondly, the angle of incidence should be larger than the critical angle. So, in order to observe total internal reflection, we require these two criteria. So, here we have four diagram. We'll predict where there will be total internal reflection and try to sketch the diagram. So the first one is done for you. You can see that, okay, the less dense medium to denser medium, it will not have total internal reflection. So it's just bent towards the normal. The second diagram is the same, because the first criteria is not matched. And the third one, the first criteria is matched from denser to less dense, but the R is smaller than C, so we won't have total internal reflection. The light is just reflect. And denser to less dense, it will bend away from the normal. And the last case, the first criteria is match, and the second criteria also match, so the light will have total internal reflection. So you can see the light is stay inside the denser medium, so the total internal reflection occurs.